Hello. So today, um, we are going to be looking, um, well, initially, at Kestrel. Um, overall, we're actually going to be working on. Um, we're actually going to be working on getting. Sorry, bear with me one second. Um, we're going to be working on getting the asteroid implementation finished off. Um, in order to do this, we need to add a few things to Kestrel um, so that we can get... Sorry, I am just trying to get this... Uh, there's a few things I haven't actually played around with yet. Um, I'm just trying to get the... stuff sorted um all right sorry about that so the first thing that we're gonna get that we need to get um get sorted is uh, we need a way to expose the current um the current time uh to lower um, at the moment there's no real way to track how long uh something's happening we've got methods for um, performing an action after a certain amount of time or repeating an action every um, every x seconds um, but we don't have a way to allow Lua to track time itself so it can perform an action um, after a certain date um, so for this uh, well internally Kestrel does have an actual um, real-time clock. Um, with this, it will give a current time, um, and this is what we're going to have to try and expose. Um, I say try. This is what we're going to expose. Um, so, we need to think of what's going to be the best way of doing this. Um, the actual time value um, is a time point, and this time point it's not something that's going to easily expose out so uh, and that's going to be easily exposed to um, that's going to easily expose to Lua so I think what we're going to do is when a scene is created when a scene is created it will have effectively its own zero point so we'll, we'll record when the scene got started and then we'll allow, um, like when someone calls, we'll basically just check the difference between the scene's start time and the current time and then return the, the difference in seconds. Uh, so to do this, we'll check the current timed events stuff and see if there's anything that we can use in there i'm pretty certain there isn't because these have their own yeah these have their own like fire date so it's basically just checking when should i next fire rather than trying to get the amount of time that's bit that's elapsed so with that in mind let's get started so the, the 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 type that we want or that we need to keep track of is a clock time. So this is basically a given well, a given point in time. So if we say um So we'll get our starting time. And then with this, we can actually ask um, we can just get the global clock and just instantiate this immediately with the current time. Uh, no sense of trying to do anything 
anything fancy there. And then we'll expose this through a Now we will do a current just current time. Uh, and then with this, we're gonna just pass it back as a double. Um, so if we get a get this generated, well actually that's probably the best place for it. Uh, event handler, no. Um, So, so what I want to do now is if we ask again the clock for its current time, pretty certain if we get the starting time like this, nope. Ah. Uh, That was it. Right. So this will get the amount of time that the amount of like from the current time, the amount of time that's elapsed since the starting time of the scene, and then it'll return it as a double um we can then go to the scene wrapper this is um this is basically what lua will deal with um so here we can just pass out a or we can just have a, a value or a function time um That's actually, we'll give it the same name, current time. Um, and then let's do the same thing. I'm saying current time. So we're just literally forwarding on to the actual scene. Um, we use a scene wrapper rather than the actual scene. Just this is primary a uh, decision that was made earlier on just to keep the scene somewhat separate from Lua, given that Kestrel uses the scene in a very specific way, and it does, I didn't want to have any risk of there being a corruption with the Lua layer, uh, something that may change in the future, but it's I don't see it as being a huge issue, to be honest. And then we'll expose this, or we'll expose the current time as a property. So if we say, Current time right. So this will give us the current time as a property of the scene. So if we build that um, the build scripts for Cosmic Frontier that I've got at the moment will automatically reach into the Kestrel project and grab the most recent build. So don't need to worry about shifting things over. So if we switch over to um, Cosmic Frontier now, which I don't have open. Give me one second. Right. So we're into into um, Cosmic Frontier again, so let's have a let's have a see of how of how we're going. So one of the things I uh, should explain is um, Cosmic Frontier has its own wrapper around scene. Um, this is so that it can manage its own entities and its own um, its own positioning and. Uh, events rather than dealing with Kestrel directly. Um, so 
we need to create a property on here to then forward along the new current time that has been uh, that's been provided. Oops. Right, so this will pass on the current time to whoever calls it on the game scene. The, the game scene is something that we can just call current with and it will um, it will correctly handle all of that. Um, it will correctly handle getting the actual underlying Kestrel scene and the scene that we want to actually be using right now um, we're looking at it now it's going to construct a new game scene out of the current underlying kestrel scene um which doesn't really work for our use case at the moment so okay let's not worry about that right at this second um what we can do is what we can do is when we come to render we can fetch the current time um, so if we fetch the current time from the scene and then we can pass this along to each entity. Uh, although that in itself, no, that that that's not a great great way of doing that. Hmm. Well, the quick and dirty way of doing this is we have a yes. The quick and dirty way of this is we just put a property, a class property on game scene. That's it. This is not really great with doing it, but for now, uh, take it It'll get the job done. So. And right now I'm a little too tired to try and work on this or to do this properly. Right now I just want to get it get this done so I can work on the logic of the asteroid animation. Um so current scene time equals so we want to get the current time out of the scene. Okay. And what we're gonna do is in the overworld renderer when we come to actually draw 
we're going to just print out the current time. Uh, this is purely so we can just confirm that this is working. And then if we run this, we'll switch over to Kestrel so that we can see it. Okay, so the time is definitely working. Um, I've probably switched a bit preemptively there. So you can see this is shooting up every single frame. Um, we're getting a purely incrementing time. Uh, if we switch back to Kestrel, uh, we can see what's already, um, what has been done so far. So you can see we've got a bit of a, got some asteroids flying around here. Um, they're both the same type. Maybe we'll see some others. Uh, what happens is, yep, so there's a bigger one. The asteroids are spawning and despawning um, based on how far they are from the ship. Um, unfortunately, the moment asteroids spawn a little, or can spawn a little bit close to the ship. Maybe we'll see that in a second. You might just see one pop into existence. Um, so at some point, there's going to need to be a check to make sure that it's actually spawning off screen. Um, Although that could lead to quite a an interesting, an interesting thing, uh, asteroids coming out of a wormhole or something. Uh, anyway, there you go. That just popped into existence. Um, yeah, at the moment everything is just basically it increments a frame, or each the yeah, the animation of the asteroid just increments by one frame every single game tick. Um, it disregards the spin rate of the asteroid, so we need to fix that and actually get to consider that now. So if we quit off that and go back to go back to here and back into the asteroid uh, or to the asteroid implementation. Actually, first of all, let's get rid of this current time. Don't want that printed out all the time. Um, right. We also want to get the good old EVN Bible, uh, going to be very, very useful. And is that going to work? Not straight off. Okay. There we go. And there we go. So that's the system one we want to go to here. So this, the spin rate, is what we're interested in here. Um, how how long should we wait between each frame um, of the asteroid? So uh, a value of 100 would be 30 frames a second. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately for this case, fortunately for the game, um, the frame rate is now higher than 30 frames a second. Um, so we can't just do a direct, um, we can't just assume 30 frames a second. It's, it's most likely gonna be at 60, but it could end up being less than 60 sometimes, or it might be more. Um, so we need to, we need to work based on actual time, not how many frames have elapsed. So if we work on, Work from the value of 30 frames a second, um, a, um, that's going to be 0 0.03 seconds um, per frame if the value is 100. Um, so that gives us our basis to work from. So let's get rid of the arrival and let's continue in the asteroid. And we need to work out. We'll do the calculation when we when we load the asteroid. There's no sense in trying to calculate this each frame because it doesn't change. Um, so. Let's 
basic. So our base is going to be um, one second divided by 13. Um, and we want to So if we're doing it as a percentage, um, I think we are going to say, so one second divided by 30, then divide that by a hundred. Yeah. So that gets our base rate. We then want to say our actual um, animation rate is going to be the base times um, the spin rate. So that should give us our actual animation rate. Uh, let's get that saved in like that. We'll say initial time. No, spawn time. Last frame time? Yeah, last frame time probably works in this space. For instance, time. Okay. And then when we're here. Sorry, next frame time. That's going to be animation rate, right? So, so I'll plot next frame time. If the next frame time is less than the current time, or less than or equal to the current scene time, then we're going to perform the animation, or we're going to go to the next frame. And we're going to also update this so let's give that a shot let's see what that's let's see what that's doing let's switch back to kestrel and enter our ship so, um, all right, that was, that was interesting. So the, the animation was completely static at first and then just started going off at the usual rate. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with a hunch and say that probably didn't work. Um, interesting. Interesting. Um, all right, let's see. Now, that doesn't look like it's spinning anywhere near as fast as it used to do. It's, yeah, that seems more reasonable. Let's have a look at some other asteroids. So I'll drift around a little bit and see whether we get anything. Hmm. I feel like we oh there we go. Well that's just yeah, that's just nuts. Yeah, that's definitely not spinning as fast. So, I mean, it's done something, but it's just not done anything correct. Uh, okay, so let's let's switch back and let's let's take a look at this a bit more. So, we're trying to detect. So we're saying 
if we've gone past hmm tell you what let's get the animation rates up um animation rates for asteroid for this we'll get the actual animation right this this will tell us the amount of time it needs to wait between each frame and animation rate for asteroid and then we'll also just get the actual spin rate as well just so we get an idea of how this was actually um how the value was derived and i won't bother switching over to kestrel this time i'll just leave it on the console because that's where everything's going to be that's where the interesting stuff's going to be happening so let me see a spin rate of 60 has given us a interval of 0 0.02 um, I'm gonna have to add something oops uh, I'm gonna have to add something else to the screen give me a second um, one second Wow, is it really not there? Is it really? Huh. Now that's interesting. You apparently can't. OBS cannot capture the calculator. All right. That is not what I expected to encounter. Let me switch the window type. No. If I nope, just doesn't want to find the calculator. How weird. Right, okay. Um, we can do this. We can do this another way. So, right, well, I'll do the calculation and um, see what's, what's happening. So, if we go with what the, what the code has, we're dividing a second by 30 to get our interval for 30 frames a second. We divide that by 100, which is what the what the EVM Bible says is a value uh, representing 30 frames a second. Times that by the spin rate, so in the case of the asteroid it's going to be a spin rate of 60. Um, like, it is coming out with the with the appropriate value is what we expect. See, with the spin rate of 100, we're getting the time per frame for 30 frames a second. So we're getting the expected values. Um, question, the question is why Hmm. So if we go to the system and 
rather than allowing it to spawn many asteroids, we're only going to permit it to spawn one asteroid. We will note when the asteroid spawns, just so that we can actually keep track of when its values are changing. And then we're also going to log out what its next um, what its next frame time is going to be. Actually, I'll do next frame time. Hopefully, if I get that entered correctly. Um, and then we'll also keep track of the current time. It's entirely possible we you know it's possible that too much time has elapsed or that the frames are taking too long. I don't think that would be the case yet. Um although it is a debug build, so uh, there's no optimization on on it, so that there could be some issues there. Sorry, um, I'm leaving it on. Um, I'm leaving it on the console for now, just so we can actually see what's happening. So it's not doing anything with the time. And it's started. You see that's definitely that's definitely animating at probably the right speed that you'd expect. It's not it's not going too fast. Um and God's sakes. Sorry, let me switch over to Kestrel for a second. So you can see it's the asteroid isn't spinning too quickly. It's spinning Pretty much what you expect. If we turn that off, and yeah, so it's increasing. Yeah, I it's it's not it's not increasing too quickly. The question is, the why? Next frame time. Why it takes so long? It's going out, so we'll get the. Too speculative there. Okay, so I've just added in another bit of logging. Um, this time we're introducing the logging at the time of spawn, so we can give that a shot. We only really care when the asteroid spawns. Um, so it waited a second before coming through. Now it's coming to frame. It's just going straight down. Uh, kind of weird. Um, so it's actually spawned. It's spawned one, then despawned it. It spawned it at the current time asteroid next frame current so it's wait until it gets to that time before doing anything huh. this is 
very, very weird. I can't quite work out why, why it doesn't, why it doesn't animate it immediately. I'm going to pull this distance down so it spawns on screen. Um, right, I'm going to switch over to Kestrel immediately so we can so we can see the effects. Also, we can see the effects of it, and and it's completely static, and then it starts going. It feels like there's probably a pattern to it. But according to the log, right, this time we're going to start it. We're going to do a quick count of how long it's actually static for on C. As I wonder whether there's something with the scene time isn't. Correct. Like as it gets started, it it's waiting um a bit more. So um if we switch over to Kestrel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So about ten and a half seconds. Well, this here is 14. Maybe I wasn't counting fast enough, but, uh, sorry. So this is saying about 14. I'm wondering whether it's waiting 14 seconds into the scene. So the longer I wait at the menu, the longer it takes the asteroid to get going. So let's give this a, let's give this a shot. We'll get in there really quick. We'll switch back over to Kestrel, and we're going to get into the ship as quick as possible and see how long it takes. Right. And that got going very quickly. And we'll try it again, but this time we're going to wait on the menu screen. Uh, let's just wait on the menu screen for a while. See what happens. So my thinking is, when the scene gets started, it gets a new zero time. Um, but when the asteroid is spawning, it's still got the previous scene time in there. So it's waiting for how long the old scene or the previous scene was in effect before it can even start animating. That's when its next frame is going to be. So as it stands now, we've waited a reasonable on that time. So if we enter the ship and let's quickly follow that asteroid before it gets too far out. And it just hasn't even gotten started. It's just sat there. So if we just drift along with it and wait and see when it gets going. It should be in like 10 or 15 seconds. It should just get get started yeah that's definitely seeming like it's the uh, the reason so we need to make sure that when the scene when the scene is started we get the time updated immediately there we go yeah okay so we can get rid of some of this logging um, we don't need that now, and if we go back to the game scene, um, the current scene time, we're doing it on the render.
Yeah, so. Yes, we need to say when we create a new scene. That's actually before we have a scene. So we don't we don't want to use that. What do we? No, we don't want to use that. We want to go here. Um, so we've got a backing scene at this point. Um, we want to say EM scene current updates I've left it on. Sorry about that. So we're adding into game scene. When we get reference to the current scene, we are going to set a new current scene time. Um again, this is one of those things that we need to it's one of those things that will get sorted out. Um when the game scene is repacked at some point so that it can actually act as a pseudo singleton so you can get a reference to the current scene and not reconstruct it and to do uh, it's a pixel select is my level uh, the fix will be literally just getting the actual current scene time out of the game scene. So you can just say game scene dot current dot current time or dot time or whatever. Right. So let's switch back to Kestrel. And this time the lone asteroid in view should be animated immediately. Difficult to see, but that was animated pretty much immediately. Um, actually, I could have test. I could have done a bit more testing. Um, of that, let's let's rerun, try again, and uh, see where we are this time. Okay, so if that just came in animated immediately. If we get more than 2,000 or 3,000 pixels away, it will spawn another one in, which should come in immediately animated. There we go. Yeah, no delay there. All right. So that sorts that out. So let's get this back to how it should be. Uh, I think I had that as 2,000. And I'm going to bump this up. I'm going to bump that up to 800. Yeah, it could still be in screen on large monitors, but there's only so far you can go. Um, at the moment, eventually I'll get this to be more reliable um, or to be more correct. But I say, for the time being, a lot of the focus is just getting some of the the main logic in place so that we know that everything is being merged, everything is being handled, rather than trying to worry about the intricacies of everything. Okay, so as we fly around. We should hopefully see a few asteroids somewhere. There we go. There's one bolting across the screen. Hopefully, we'll see a few others. Um, uh, there's another. Definitely going at a different rate. Um, oh, another one just up there.
yeah, so they're not spinning at a ludicrous speed. They're still going reasonably fast, but I think they always did go reasonably fast. Uh, some of the others have definitely been slower. So if we have a look at the next one. Uh, the frustrating thing is there's always an amount in the vicinity of me, but it's just a case of where uh, there's, I think those big ones must just spin very, very fast. Can't right remember though. Okay, so we've seen a few flying around. Um, let's, uh, let's quit off just there for now. And I'll make sure that that last bit of rocky is removed. Okay, so that gets us the actual asteroid animations. Um, just to wrap up, uh, wrap up things, um, I'm going to quickly uh, just switch to a different different ship, um, just to show a few of the other. The other things um, or the other ships that have been put in um, there are still a few uh, a few things of the ships to sort out um, so I'll put in um, it seems only fitting that we get the Kestrel um, if I can find the Right, I'm just checking through my info. Uh, three seven eight. So let's try putting in the Kestrel three seven eight, and let's just go to Sol. Because why not? I know that Sol works. I've not actually tried putting the Kestrel in yet. Hopefully, nothing goes bang. Oh. It's all there, uh, working. Yep. Uh, can't remember if there's any asteroids in the Sol system or not, so. Uh, and once again, I, ah, there's, there's an asteroid. And once again, I've forgotten to switch over. Uh, so yeah, we've got Kestrel flying around. Uh, got our targeting working. Um, yeah, I think we'll call it a we'll call it a night for that. Um, yeah, not a huge amount going on this going on this uh, going on with this stream, but. Um, We've got a few things, we've got a few things fixed and sorted, and hopefully it's allowed you to see a bit more of the, a bit more of the development process, including a bit of Kestrel itself, um, like working or adding, adding some new Lua functionality into the Kestrel engine, um, which I haven't been able to on any previous or I haven't had need to do on the previous streams yet. Um there's definitely gonna be a lot more of that to come. Um next stream I may start to focus on something such as text which isn't fully working at the moment so uh tends to crash if you try and put text into a scene. So yeah that's that's gonna be a fun one. Um 